Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered today on the second of the fifth month, the second month of summer, and it is the 16th of July on the Gregorian calendar for 2022. We're currently finishing up the recognitions of Clement, which we only have a very little bit to go. Didn't know that until this uh, this week. I was actually reading this separately every night with my family, and we caught up and finished the book beforehand. So I was like, oh, well, there we go. But uh, we'll go ahead and finish this and get on. All right. We're currently on book 10. This is chapter 48, Kepha's entry into Antioch. And I do believe we might have read this part already, but we'll go ahead and do that anyways. So just to recap, <clears throat> Bastinius, <clears throat> Clement, Aceta, and Aquila's, Aquila's father had had issues being fully convinced of the belief, but he had not listened to Shimon completely when he had been given permission to go see his friends. He went and also associated with Simon the magician, who used sorcery on him to get his face to look like Simon's himself. Because he had thought that Cornelius and the Romans were after sorcerers and magicians to put them to death. So he wanted to have Clement's or Aquila and Nesita's father get captured and put to death to punish them for their betrayal of him, if you will. Because when they found out he was a magician, they left him. So Kepha's entry into Antioch. But Shimon began, though secretly, to go amongst his friends and acquaintances, <clears throat> and to malign Kepha more than before. Then all spat in his face and drove him from the city, saying, You will be chargeable with your own death if you think of coming hither again, speaking against Kepha. These things being known at Laodicea, Kepha ordered the people to meet on the following day, and having ordained one of those who followed him as overseer over them, and others as zekanim or elders, and having immersed multitudes and restored to health all who were troubled with sicknesses or demons, he stayed there three days longer, <clears throat> and all things being properly arranged, he bade them farewell and set out from Laodicea. Being much longed for by the people of Antioch. And the whole city began to hear through Nesita and Aquila that Kepha was coming. Then all the people of the city of Antioch, hearing of Kepha's arrival, went to meet him and almost all the old men and nobles came with ashes sprinkled on their heads, in this way testifying their repentance, because they had listened to the magician Shimon in opposition to his preaching. Stating these things and such like, sorry, stating these and such like things, they bring to him those distressed with sicknesses, and tormented with demons, paralytics also, and those suffering diverse perils. And there were an infinite number of sick people collected. Now, if you remember <clears throat> last week when Fastinius was doing the speaking with Shimon's face, he was talking about how Simon the magician was the liar, the deceiver, the one plagued by demons that are using his mouth to deceive the people. And that Kepha was there for the deliverance of their inner beings and the preacher of the truth who could heal every disease and raise the dead and do all these things. And so he, he had said that to them. And all the people of Antioch believed to the point where they brought out an innumerable number of those that are in need of healing or some type of help. And because of that, <clears throat> because of their belief, a very amazing miracle happens here. 
something that's a greater miracle than you see Yahushua Mashiach do in his person, which is exactly what he foretold, that because he was ascending to the Father, greater works than these they were going to do. And this is one of them right here. But it says, and when Kepha saw that they only, or that they not only repented of the evil thoughts that they had entertained of him through means of Shimon, but also that they showed so entire belief in Elohim, that they believed that all who were suffered from every sort of ailment could be healed by him. He spread out his hands towards Shemaim, pouring out prayers with tears and gave thanks to Yahuwah, saying, I barak you, Father Yahuwah, worthy of all praise, who have denied to fulfill every word and promise of your Son, that every creature may know that you alone are Elohim in Shemaim and in earth. With such sayings, he went up on a height and ordered all the multitude of the sick people to be ranged before him and addressed them all in these words. As you see me to be a man like to yourselves, do not suppose that you can recover your health from me, but through him who, coming down from Shemaim, has shown to those who believe in him a perfect medicine for body and ruach, or inner being. Hence let all this people, our witnesses to your declaration, that with your whole heart you believe in Master, or Yahuwah, Yahushua HaMashiach, that they may know that themselves also may be delivered by him. <clears throat> So the whole point of the miracle is for those that don't believe. He states very clearly with his mouth what their belief is that they're showing and what they're doing. And this is for the purpose that the others may know and also be delivered by him. Okay. And when all the multitude of the sick with one voice cried out that he is the true Elohim whom, whom Kepha preaches, Suddenly, an overpowering light of the favor of Elohim appeared in the midst of the people, and the paralytics being cured began to run to Kepha's feet, the blind to shout on the recovery of their sight, the lame to give thanks on regaining the power of walking, the sick to rejoice in restored health, even some, or some even rather, who were barely alive, being already without consciousness or the power of speech, were raised up, and all the lunatics and those possessed of demons were set free. So great favor of his power did the Shekin Yah, right? They call it the Shekinah, but it's the Shekin Yah, right? The Yah who is presence, show on that day that all from the least to the greatest with one voice confessed Yahuwah, and not to delay you with many words, within seven days more than 10,000 men believing in Elohim were immersed and set apart by set apartness, or consecrated by set apartness, so that Theophilus, who was more exalted than all the men of power in that city, with all eagerness of desire, set apart the great palace of his house under the name of a kahal, and a chair was placed in it for the emissary Kepha by all the people, and the whole multitude assembling daily to hear the word, believed in the heartfelt doctrine that was avouched by the efficacy of cures. And this is the best way for anyone to get true belief because it's what was established by Yahushua himself when he came and given by him to his taught ones to do. The truth being delivered by innocent men with the power from on high to do the convincing of it for the hearts because anybody's words can be persuaded to, you know, you can be persuaded by words one way or another as Kepha rightly explains elsewhere in this book. <clears throat> 
but it's the the manifestation of the power of Yahuwah in the the curing of those that are in ill that isn't something that a man can do and convinces them that of the truth of what you say right then i clement with my brothers and our mother spoke to our father asking him whether any remnants of unbelief remained in him and he said come and you will see in the presence of kepha what an increase of belief has grown in me. Then Fastinius approached and fell down at Kepha's feet, saying, The seeds of your word, which the field of my mind has received, are now sprung up, and have so advanced to fruitful maturity, that nothing is wanting but that you separate me from the chaff by that spiritual reaping hook of yours, and place me in the garner of Yahuwah, making me partaker of Elohim's table. And uh, it, Elohim's table is mentioned in Malach, Malachi. If you don't know, you can read about that, where the people say the table of Yahuwah is despicable, right? <clears throat> but the uh, if you're familiar with the anti mashiach for dummies, and the book of Revelation, that spiritual reaping hook that separates the people was that first one, the, the grape gathering reaping hook, not like a, not like what they think with the reaper and the sheaves. And then the other one was for the, the rat, the vat of the wrath, the vine, uh, the grapes of going into the vat of the wrath of Elohim, right? But to get back on track here. It says, then Kepha, with all excelatory or quickness, grasping his hand, presented him to me, Clement, and my brother, saying, as Elohim has restored your sons to you, their father, so also your sons restore their father to Elohim. And he proclaimed a fast to all the people. And on the next day, <clears throat> or sorry, and on the next Shabbat, he immersed him. And in the midst of the people, taking occasion from his conversion, he related all his fortunes, so that the whole city received him as a messenger, and paid him no less honor than they did to the emissary. And I hadn't realized this beforehand, but I just, it came to mind as I was reading right here, you have the Ruach of Eliyahu, which was supposed to be coming before the great Nasim day or yom of yahuwah which culminated in the coming of yahoo uh yahoo yahoo canon the immerser right they call him john the baptist in english i'm sorry but he was supposed to return the sons unto their fathers and the fathers to their sons <clears throat> and in a parallel here you see that that was what was being done here so i think that was rather interesting but thank you for your time. We're going to take a pause and figure out what we're going to do in just a moment. Okay, so this is after, in Jackson Snyder's version of the recognitions of Clement, we have some letters that are appended to the end of it. And this is one of them. I believe both this one and Clement's letter to Yaakov about the martyrdom of Kepha were appended to or they're prefixed to the homilies originally but he put them back here for anyone to keep and if i'm mistaken and someone knows better you can feel free to correct me however this is kepha to yaakov the master and overseer of the devoted congregation under the father of all through yahushua hamashiach desires shalom always Knowing, my brothers, your eager desire after that which is for the advantage of us all, I beg and beseech you not to communicate to any one of the goyim or nations the scrolls of my preachings which I sent to you, nor to any one of our own tribe before trial. But if anyone has been proved and found worthy, then to commit them to him after the manner in which Moshe delivered his scrolls to the 70 who succeeded to his chair. 
So that, that's following an established pattern of these are not meant for everyone, but they're given to people who are following an example of what was already set down. And if you remember, Moshe had the truth given from Yahuwah. He brought the elders of the people and he anointed them, but he gave them to, of the Ruach to be able to go teach the people. And this would have been mm -hmm. the things that we don't see in the common scriptures that would have been passed down. If you're familiar with fourth Ezra, when he was given by the will of Yahuwah to be endowed with his Ruach and through five scribes to record all the writings, he was told to make 23 of them public for the worthy and the unworthy, but the other 70 were to be hidden for the intelligent and wise among the people because it wasn't meant for everybody. <clears throat> This is that same theme. He says, wherefore, also the fruit of that caution appears even till now. For his countrymen keep the same rule of monarchy and polity everywhere, being unable in any way to think otherwise, or to be led out of the way of the much indicating scriptures. For according to the rule delivered to them, they endeavor to correct the discordances of the scriptures. And if any one, being not blessed to know the traditions, is confounded at the various utterances of the foretellers, wherefore they charge no one to teach unless he has first learned how the scriptures must be used. And thus they have amongst them one Elohim, one Torah, one expectation or hope. In order, therefore, that they, or sorry, that the like may also be to those among us as to those 70, or these 70, give the scrolls of my preachings to our brethren with the like mystery of initiation, that they may indoctrinate those who desire to take part in teaching. For if it be not so done, our word of truth will be rent into many opinions. And this I know, not as being a foreteller, but as already seen the beginning of this very evil. For some from among the nations have rejected my Torah observant preaching, attaching themselves to certain Torahless and trifling preaching of the man who is my enemy. And that would be Simon the Magician. <clears throat> And these things some have attempted while I am alive to transform my words by certain various interpretations in order to bring about the dissolution of the Torah, as though I also myself were of such a mind, but did not freely proclaim it, which Yahuwah forbid. For such a thing were to act in opposition to the Torah of Yahuwah, which was spoken by Moshe and was borne witness to by our master in respect to it, its ageless continuance. For thus he spoke, The Shemaim and the earth shall pass away, but one yod and one punctuation mark shall in no wise pass from the Torah. And this he has said, that all things might come to pass. But these men professing, I know not how, to know my mind undertake to explain my words, which they have heard of me, more intelligently than I who spoke them, telling their taught ones that this is my meaning, which indeed I never thought of. <clears throat> and for context here, we have the Gnostic Gospels, as they call it, which is writings attributed to the emissaries, but are blasphemous errors that exist. They're also included in the anti-Nicene patriarchs writings of the first 300 years, for example. But um, they're condemned in the apostolic constitutions, and also he's talking about them here. These men attributed these things to Kepha and Jacob and the different emissaries, but they were Gnostic writings that were perverted in their comprehension. And they were never approved of or considered real amongst the body. It might not be well known today, but that was a really big thing at that time that was going on. And this is what he's talking about here. <clears throat> it 
It says, but if while I am still alive, they dare thus to misrepresent me, how much more will those who shall come after me dare to do so? Which is exactly what happened. Therefore, that no such thing may be done. For this end I have prayed and besought you not to communicate the scrolls of my preaching that I have sent to you to anyone, whether of our own tribe or of another tribe, before trial. But if anyone, having been tested, has been found worthy, then to hand them over to him according to the initiation of Moshe, by which he delivered his scrolls to the seventy who succeeded to his chair, in order that thus they may keep the belief and everywhere deliver the rule of truth, explaining all things after our tradition. Least being themselves dragged down by ignorance, being drawn into error by conjectures after their mind, they bring others into the like pit of destruction. And <clears throat> just for context right there, you have in the epistle of Barnabas and in one of Irenaeus's writings, which I believe is the demonstration of the apostolic preaching, where they go over psalm 1 and in the epistle of barnabas he also equates this to the dietary instructions but in psalm 1 you have the three men the three ways of being in this world and it says ashray or happy is the man who shall not walk in the way of the wicked shall not stand in the place of sinners and shall not sit in the seat of the pestilential or the scorners or scoffers Irenaeus explains it as the first being those that don't know the Torah and walk in evil. The second is those who know the Torah, but don't walk in it. So they're standing in the place of sinners. And the third are those that not only don't walk correctly, so they're, they're doing evil, but they sit in like in a position of authority to teach others. And like pestilential men or disease-ridden men, they spread their infection. So this is what they're talking about here, where anyone who's teaching something contrary to the, the word is no longer professing the truth or teaching what's right, but pestilential in what they're doing. And that's it's a horrible way to be. <clears throat> he says, now the things that seemed good to me, I have fairly pointed out to you. And what seems good to you, do you, my master, becomingly perform? Farewell. <clears throat> Therefore, Jacob, having read the letter, sent for the elders, and having read it to them, said, Our Kepha has strictly and becomingly charged us concerning the establishing of the truth, that we should not communicate the scrolls of his preachings, which have been sent to us, to anyone at random, but to one who is good and obedient, and who desires to teach, and who is circumcised and trustworthy. Now, that circumcision would be of the heart, okay? And because we've already covered that too, and you'll see it again when we go over the heresy section of the Apostolic Constitutions. But the, the circumcision being done away with or temporarily put off for the children was foretold as far back as the times before judges, where when they were in the wilderness, the children were not circumcised. Okay, it was foretold over 400 years before it happened by Ezra, where he, Yahuwah, through the Ruach speaking in his mouth, said he was fed up and done with their circumcisions of their flesh. He was going to put it away with then you had that direct injunction in the book of Acts and with what Shaul says in his epistles. And all of that is for context. In the Apostolic Constitutions, it plainly mentions how all that plays out. The circumcision was to make the families distinct and unique until the coming of our Mashiach to whom the inheritance belongs. But now that he's come, just like the genealogies are no longer applicable to be kept amongst the people in general, 
because he knows all who are his. Um, it, it's still somewhat kept with the nobility, of course. But these things are what was enjoined at the time for good purpose. And you can see it right here. Um, it might be a translation bias. But moving on. It says, and these are not all to be committed to him at once, that if he be found injudicious in the first, the others may not be entrusted to him. For this reason, let him be proved not less than six years. And then, according to the initiation of Moshe, he that is to be, <clears throat> sorry, he that is to deliver the scrolls should bring him to a river or a fountain, which is living water, where the regeneration of the righteous takes place, and should make him not swear, for that is not according to Torah, but to stand by the water and adjure, as we ourselves, when we were regenerated, were made to do for the sake of not stoning. And let him say, I take to witness Shemaim, earth, water, in which all things are comprehended. And in addition to all these, that air also that pervades all things, and without which I cannot breathe, that I will always be obedient to him who gives me the scrolls of the preachings, and to those same scrolls that he may give me. I will not communicate to anyone in any way, either by writing them or giving them in writing or giving them to a writer, either myself or by another, or through any other initiation or trick or method, or by keeping them carelessly or placing them before anyone or granting him permission to see them or in any way or manner whatsoever, communicating them to another, unless I will ascertain one to be worthy, as I myself have been judged, or even more so, and that after a probation of not less than six years, but to one who is obedient and good, chosen to teach, as I have received them, so I will commit them doing these things also according to the will of my overseer. So you can see even the emissaries, they were still subservient to their overseer when they came, if you were familiar. Yaakov was the overseer of the Yarushalayim assembly, which they were partakers of, but they were going out to teach as emissaries. Here we go. It says, but otherwise, though he were my son or my brother or my friend or otherwise in any way pertaining to be my kindred, if he be unworthy, that I will not vouchsafe the favor to him as it is not fitting. And I will neither be terrified by plot nor mollified by gifts. But if even it should ever seem to me that the scrolls of the preachings given to me are not true. I will not so communicate them, but will give them back. And when I go abroad, I will carry them with me, whatever of them I have in my possession. But if I be not minded to carry them about with me, I will not suffer them to be in my house, but will deposit them with my overseer. Having the same belief, and setting out from the same persons as myself. But if it befell me to be sick, and in expectation of death, and if I be childless, I will act in the same manner. But if I die having a son who is not worthy, or not yet capable, I will act in the same manner. For I will deposit them with my overseer, in order that if my son, when he grows up, be worthy of the trust, he may give them to him as his father's, or as his father's bequest, according to the terms of this engagement. And that I will thus do, I again call to witness Shemaim, earth, water, in which all things are enveloped, and in addition to all these, the all-pervading air, 
without which I cannot breathe, that I will always be obedient to him who gives me these scrolls of the preachings, and I will observe in all things as I have engaged, or even something more. To me, therefore, keeping this covenant, there will be a part with the, the devoted ones, but to me doing anything contrary to what I have covenanted, may the creation be hostile to me, and the all-pervading ether, and the Elohim who is over all to whom none is superior, than whom none is greater. But even if I should come to the acknowledgement of another mighty one, I now swear by him also. And you see before, it wasn't a swear. But once you, if someone was to not believe in the true Elohim and pervert themselves by idolatry, now they do swear by him also, that he or that be he or be he not, that I will not do otherwise. And in addition to all these things, if I will lie, I will be accursed living and dying and will be punished with everlasting punishment. And after this, let him partake of bread and salt with him who commits them to him, meaning it's a covenant of salt that cannot be broken, right? But right here, this terrifies the people to think that such a thing would be asked or required of someone who was given trust to teach. Okay, now Jacob's explanation is what makes it all worthwhile. So please, We'll read that real quick. This is Jacob having thus spoken. The elders were in an agony of terror. Therefore, Jacob, perceiving that they were greatly afraid, said, Hear me, brothers and fellow servants. If we should give the scrolls to all indiscriminately, and they should be corrupted by any daring men, or be perverted by interpretations, as you have heard that some have already done, it will remain even for those who really seek the truth. Always to wander in error. For this reason, it is better that they should be with us and that we should communicate them with all the aforementioned care to those who desire to live obediently and to deliver others. But if anyone, after taking this adjuration, will act otherwise, he will with good reason incur ageless punishment. For why should he not he, who is the cause of the destruction of others, not be destroyed himself? Meaning, why should he not reap what he sowed? The elders, therefore, being pleased with the sentiments of Jacob, exclaimed, Baruch be he who, foreseeing all things, has favorably appointed you as our overseer. And when they had said this, we all rose up and prayed to the Father and Yahuwah of all, to whom be esteemed forever. Amen. Now, Yahuwah of all might seem like a weird phrase, but if you know what his name means, he who causes it to be for all, right? And he is the one who is the ultimate cause of all things. All right. The next letter here that we have, I'll take a break after just a second, but the next letter we have, if we would get to it, is Clement's letter to Yaakov. And it's about the martyrdom of Kepha and what he was taught right before, or right before Kepha was taken. All right. <clears throat> 